Hi, my, my name is Gary Warner. I'm part of the Notel customer service team here in Nova Scotia, Canada. So today I'm going to do an overview of the NV series and the VS series transmitter AUI instrumentation, the AUI being the advanced user interface. So before we start, just let, let you know that the NV has nine instrument options and the VS has eight. Um, on the screen today, you can see an NV transmitter. That's actually an NV5. And you can see at the moment we have four different instrumentations on the page. That's the maximum we can have, or we can maximize any particular screen or instrumentation and just have the one. And when we close out by using the X and then go to the gear wheel, there are our options. So you can see we have nine options. So I'll go back to the spectrum analyzer and I will maximize it. So you can see here the then the display and it's it's normalized um, to, to carrier, meaning that the noise floor is normalized to an unmodulated carrier peak at zero dB. And the scale down the left hand side is zero to minus one hundred dB. The detection mode used is RMS and the window type we've chosen is the uh, um, Blackman Harris. Now this was chosen because according to standards it's the best for measurement accuracy. And uh, up the top you see we have a few buttons that can be pressed. The target icon or the left hand side one is a peak detection and once you've pressed this you see here we've we've peaked this particular point and then you can move it left and right using the arrows. The downward arrow here minimizes that screen and the upward arrow maximizes it. And the gear wheel here goes into our options screen. So here you can set up the resolution bandwidth, the span, and the averaging rate. And we can also select our input source. So the input source has a few options. The transmitter output is the feedback signal from the output of the transmitter and this is the signal actually used for pre-correction. Um, the combiner output isn't currently used and the FPGA forward path this is a digital signal on the excited before the DAC or the digital to analog converter and it's used to determine the performance of the transmitter before the RF is even switched on so it gives us an idea of how the transmitter is going to perform. The forward path is additionally generated by the DSP and is basically used by engineering. So another usable one by the customer is the audio analyzer and this shows us the audio spectrum. It's normalized to a 200% tone. So a 100% tone would give us a level at minus 6 dB. Now this is really handy to check your SCAs, the RDS, the carriers that are in the composite broadband um, signal spectrum. So that's the spectrum analyzer. So we we'll close this one out, and we go in to talk about these EQ frequency response, the EQ impulse response, and the EQ filter. These three are basically used by engineering, and they're images of digital filtering applied before leaving the FPGA on the exciter. Now they can be used or programmed um, to correct for group delay in a channel combiner. Once again, they are used by engineering, but um, as an overview, that's, that's what they're there for. The AM to AM correction is used to correct for gain changes throughout the complete system of the transmitter from exciter, IPA, PA, and the filter. So it corrects for um, changes in the level of drive. And similarly, the AM to PM, which is here. This is used to correct for phase changes throughout the transmitter system. It's not used in FM, so it's only used in HD. And once um, the correction curve has been established, it's stored in the form of a LUT or a lookup table. So in summary, both of these curves are used to correct for nonlinearity and minimize distortion of a received signal. The next one we'll look at is the Lissajou plot.
Now this rep represents either left and right audio content or INQ phase information in HD modes. For example, if we were looking at a, a left and right signal and the phase and amplitude, amplitude were identical, um, if the transmitter was set to an analog mode, at the moment we're set to a hybrid mode, but the left and right would be a straight line going from lower left to upper right. So it gives us an, an indication that we've got things connected correctly. Now if we do left and right stereo, the majority of the signal indicated would still be in these two quadrants, but it'd be kind of scattered around kind of where I'm showing the cursor going there. So if you were looking at a composite um, input, you would see a circle in FM mode, and that circle basically would represent the amplitude coming from the exciter. It'd be a nice circle. But if you were to go into HD mode, the circle represents the exciter power, and the fuzz on that circle would give you an indication of the injection level. So the, the more the fuzz, the higher the injection level. At the moment, we're RF off, and that's why you're seeing the, the dots going around like they are. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Once again, it's used by engineering, but um, that was just a basic overview of what you're actually seeing. I will look at the signal constellation. So this shows the plot of the digital carriers as seen by a receiver. Now, typically the dots would be grouped together around the ideal data points. The plus and minus buttons at the top let you select different subcarriers, and some of the some of the carriers are used for timing, and others are used for data. But probably the most useful information on this screen is the EVM percent down the bottom left. That gives us a sense of the the signal quality. So ideally, this would be zero, but normally and typically, it's somewhere around the 15% mark. And that's due to the peak to average power reduction being applied by the XGen card. And our last option here is the power distribution curve, or often called the CCDF, which is the complementary commutative distribution function. Now, it's an engineering tool used to show the likelihood of peak power through the amplifier. So it measures the relative power level of the signal and determines the probability of exceeding a given power level relative to the average power. Again, it's an engineering tool, but that's just a brief overview of what we have. So that brings this training session to an end. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact Nartel at support at nartel.com. Once again, this is Gary Warner from the customer service team here in Nartel in Halifax, Canada. Have a great day. Maybe I spoke too fast there, but I wanted to get it done. No, that's fine. I get it. I don't want this thing to run 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. <laughs>